uh, because I think if you see it, you'll perhaps want to film it. Yes, really. Um, yeah, because it's actually come out, uh, everybody's just amazed by it. it it's it's yeah. quite interesting and, and it's the start of a new journey. It calls into question really um, what is temporary and what is permanent um, because it's an alternative to the tent. Yes. Well, you could say that the project that we're presenting here is the ultimate back to basics. It's the basics of shelter. And this project started with a workshop, a program of workshops at the Norman Foster Foundation in Madrid started in 2017 when we launched it. And a workshop is typically 10 graduates from around the world with a similar number of experts on the subject. The subject's always about the city, sustainability issues of urbanism. And, um, and young people who will be the civic leaders of the future. We already have one alumni of the workshops who's a mayor in, in Chile. Uh, so this workshop, June last year, was on the refugee crisis. In other words, how do you respond to the needs of uh, families who natural or man-made disasters, wars, earthquakes, um, uh, suddenly cast adrift and, and are given a tent. And, um, and the tent is temporary, it's flimsy, it's a piece of cloth, but it's welcome, um, but it's, you know, uh, it's inhuman, uh, especially when temporary can mean anything up to 20 years for a family in a refugee camp. So for this workshop, we erected the most sophisticated tent, um, which has been produced in conjunction with the care. And the team in the foundation built the tent. So we, we saw what it was, the 16 hours, we experienced it. And then it was there during the week and we had uh, the UN director from Syria phoning in, zooming in directly. We had disaster relief experts, we had academics, we had uh, people who'd made the tents and research. So, um, and the students quite rightly were challenging and saying, surely there's something between a tent and a permanent building which is going to take a year or, or so. And out of that Holsim, uh, who'd sponsored this workshop, um, some months later, August after the, uh, the workshop, said, we were so impressed by the workshop, what if we tried to demonstrate some of those principles in a pavilion in the Biennale, which was a deadline nine months away, and a small team in the foundation. We started on that. Immediately we brought contracting skills together with Holsim's research capabilities. And the outcome uh, is this small pavilion, which, um, which is something that can be built by totally inexperience. In other words, a family finds themselves ad adrift. They're given this kit of parts it arrives in a truck um, and they make it. And how do they make it? Well, they find that they've got some lightweight formwork which describes a rather beautiful shaped arch, which is six meter wide and quite tall. And it has, uh, where it comes down to the ground, uh, it's, it's obviously lower. Uh, and over this formwork, they're given a canvas and the canvas is impregnated with a low-carbon cement. Um, and they put two layers over this formwork. The inner layer is corrugated, the outer layer is smooth. And it's like a textile, it is a textile. 
So they spray it with water. In a few hours, it's stiff. In 24 hours, it's absolutely rigid. And that wraps around underneath, so it's a total enclosure. And it sits without foundations on a bed of recycled aggregate. So it's now very firm. It's very durable, it's very protective, and it already has some insulation. But they zip in an inner lining of additional insulation. The flat packs give them lightweight ends to this tube. There are roof lights in it. You can have side windows. Um, and the flat pack gives you a bathroom, small kitchen, and that's under the, like the eaves of the shell. really high performance and compared with a traditional dwelling it's it's um, a 70% improvement in carbon footprint so it's highly sustainable and the interesting thing is that everybody who's seen this said wow I'd, I'd love to live in this I'd, lo I'd like one of these uh, on my rooftop or I'd like to spend the night here that it's work in progress. It's not an end result, it's the start of a journey because uh, if this has application for instant disaster relief, then it has application in terms of homeless, it has application in terms of young families who want perhaps an alternative to uh, a building that is unaffordable and is gonna take forever to build, maybe it challenges what we think of as temporary. I mean, a tent will last a year. The most sophisticated tent that I described, three years. This has a minimum life expectancy of, of 20 years and undoubtedly will go beyond that. And it's actually quite friendly, I mean, literally to the, to the touch. Mm -hmm.